Today it's Thursday, September 26, 2024. 113K. Engines being covered. Um, I have to prepare the covers, like I said yesterday. Supercharger. I put the pulley, I put the bolt and the washer here. It's not being torqued down. I need to torque it down. It's not now the time. I put the plenum. All right. There we go. Nicely. The fittings here, this block, it's just by hand. Because most probably here we're going to come to uh, nozzles for uh, methanol. This is also by hand. It's not been for final. And the other one here, I just block it. I trim a little bit the rubber of the bypass throttle to have a clearance. Don't give me any, he any headache. I have this grommet here. Throttle here, the cable, it's not extension, it's translating, it's adapter from this one to the Mercedes one to be able to be plug and play. All right, I'm still, I still need this plug. All right, I put the new map sensor here. I'm gonna say something about the map sensor and the coolant and the coolant uh -huh, and the intake internal sensor. Now, what's remaining from the supercharger from from this side? What's remaining for me to do? I need to give a vacuum to the uh, charcoal canister solenoid, and most probably gonna get it from here. And I need to give a vacuum to the pipes that are going for the breather on the cover. All right, yeah. We're gonna see how we're gonna do it. Definitely, I might. I don't care about the secondary injection valves because the car doesn't have a catalytic converter. That's a. We're gonna bring me the owner. Tube, uh, long tube headers, short tube headers. I don't know which one. And you're not gonna have cuts, so the secondary injection is pointless. You're not gonna have the small pipe to go to the solenoid here to control the. Um, secondary air injection valves. The solenoid is going to be plugged to close the circuit, but not the pneumatic, not the, the pipe. And that's it regarding the supercharger, for now at least. I'll put the intercooler down, I'll seal it. You can see down over there. Minimum amount of sealant, no need, because they are precise surfaces. But the other thing what I want to do, let me do it now to finish it, don't forget it. Down there, I use the 45 Torx, uh, the original one. Here up, I put the Allen, but it's short. You're going to tell me here back has only suction. Yes, you're right. But if I can fit here the 45 Torx, that's longer, why not, right? L let me do that now to finalize this. And I'm coming back. And that's what I'm talking about. Here still has the Allen. Right. Yeah, I know, it doesn't look so fancy like this one. It looks much better, the Allen. Yeah, I know, but this, it has better engagement. If I had same type of Allen with the same length, that much, I'm gonna use the Allen. But again, what's the benefit? Yes, it's not fancy, like I said, but it has more surface here the bolt versus the Allen one, all right? And has more engagement on the threads inside. It's gonna be fine even with the Allen. I'm just, I feel better if I use this. That's me, all right? I'm not saying that's something wrong or something. I'm just saying I feel much better using this one. Let me put also the other one. Finish from the bolts, all right? It will gonna be fine. Now, now that I'm thinking again, maybe I'm making a mistake here. And maybe this bolts, but it was inside of that. Because it was the bolts with a small allen. So it has to be for that. Why I'm saying that? Because there might be, these bolts might be for the, for the pulleys. Yeah, I might need a washer here. 
I need to add the washer here. It might be for the pulleys and maybe it's, this is my mistake, probably. I don't know, maybe. Okay. Uh, then, what I have here, I, fin I fixed the, I removed, I didn't fix. I drilled the bolt, what had here, the original one. It was not coming out, it was a pain in the butt. The same thing from this side, I have put the corresponding pulleys here, one and four. The fifth, the small ones here, the two and three, it's together here with a spacer in the middle. It's not now the time. This is supposed to be sandwiched with this. I have the instructions here. I'm talking about this one. Yeah, I'm right. It has to be a sandwich. Yeah. <clears throat> then I'm going to use this water pump pulley, the lightest one. Okay, the old filter housing there. I have here how many belts I have? One, two, three, four belts. Yeah, four belts to see which one is going to fit out of these four belts. It's supposed to be different numbers. Or not. I see the same number here. We're going to see when it comes to time. We have time until that. Here I keep the throttle, like I said, the gasket for the throttle and the four bolts. Alright, and keep it there. I have no clue which bolts are these, where they're going. We're going to find out. I have these bolts and I have also these bolts. These bolts was on the damper pulley. These, they have Loctite on them, and shorter, these they don't, and it's longer. This definitely belongs to the to this pulley, because it was already on the damper pulley, I remove it. Finish with that. Keep also the papers here. This paper is for the throttle, I don't know if it has anything for the tuning, Any maybe it has also torque specs or whatever, okay? This is for the belt wrap kit, okay? This is for the pulleys and this is for the harmonic damper, uh, for the balance shaft, for the balance shaft, uh -huh. for the damper pulley, yeah. Then, finish from this side. Finish from the block. All right, give me a second. Let's go here. My friend, the owner, he was looking for the oil thermostat housing. Here it's where it's located. Here where it goes the thermostat, here where it's the two pipes that goes to the oil cooler. He couldn't found, he couldn't found anywhere the housing. And wherever he found it, there was not removing it from the engine. It makes sense actually. Now, what can I do for that? I can weld it from inside, because simply from outside there's no so much space. I'm gonna have a problem with the clearance here. It's not smart to weld it from here. It's smart to weld it from here inside. The thing is that because I'm not a welder, like I said, when I go near here, if I warm it up too much, I'm gonna compromise this area. That's the one thing that I'm thinking. Yeah, one good welder, he'll gonna be able to weld it properly. So I'm thinking to stop somewhere here, to don't go full down with the weld. The second thing that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking to get one aluminum plate this size, bolt it down, and then have a hole at this point here where I want to weld it, to have support all around, and to don't have, I'm not gonna have to guess if it's straight or not. I will gonna check it after all at the end, but it will gonna help me out even better. Good thing is that it has a good fit. It's it's not so bad. It didn't break in 10 pieces. That's the point. <clears throat> That's one thing. We're gonna see about that. I might send it to someone else to weld it for me. Someone that he's more skilled than me on welding. And I hope they're not gonna get, they're not gonna fucked up this one. This is for the thermostat housing. Then, then we have the, we have the intake temperature sensor. And what's my problem with the temperature sensor? It's not the right thing what I'm doing here. I have to measure the resistor and I have to fix something here to be held there and leave it for one minute to equalize. I have an aftermarket temperature sensor Okay, 
that they have removed the numbers from here, classic, and I have the OEM. And this test I'm going to do it on the car, not here. It's not right to do it here. It's not correct. What's my point? I want to see how much reading the OEM versus this one. To don't have big difference. That's my point. If it's plus minus one degree, it's fine. Just in case, to don't have any headache. Imagine, let us say, showing this sensor 10 degrees lower, and you, you think that you have a colder intake temperature, you know? Higher, okay, you're not going to have performance, but lower, you might have a problem. So, just a second. So, for now, I'm not going to mount none of these temperature sensors. I'm going to make one test at the end. I'm going to plug one. I'm going to have the diagnostic. I'm going to monitor the intake temperature here. I'm going to just place it like this. Or I'm going to keep it, let us say, out as an example. All right? Keep it there for five minutes, read the temperature, and then repeat the same thing with the sensor. Just to see that we are on the same page, that both sensors reading plus minus one degree, two degrees. We're going to see. The same thing I'm going to do also with the MAP sensor. I want to see the atmospheric pressure. I have a gauge actually. And to compare the values to see that it's reading properly. So don't have any headache. And that's it. Just one small update. More small update. We're going to end up to be 10 minutes video again. <clears throat> Regarding the supercharger, like I said, the temperature sensor, the pulse and these kind of things. All right. And my headache. Dang it, dang it. From the other hand, it was not leaking. <laughs> Sorry, but it's not right to put only with three bolts. And I don't want to put epoxy or something. I mean, I might do what I said. I might weld it, not here on the surface. Weld it from inside here till one point here. Don't reach near to the thin wall. And then at the end, I might fill it up with epoxy to reinforce it. It's not a bad idea. And I might cut a little bit the, the corner here and a little bit here the corner. Just to... No, I'm, I know that I'm going to over-penetrate with the weld. I'm always doing that. I want to see when I'm going to when I'm going to stop doing that. Yeah. Uh, anything else? No, nothing. Nothing more. Nothing less. Preparing the parts, trying to figure it out with this. Either we're going to fuck up completely, and then we're going to looking for a for a housing. I hope not. This one is going to go back to the owner. It's the old one. The new one is over there. I put um, a transfer also the bracket. Okay, uh, I need to make also one test for the thermos, for the oil thermostat here to see that it has enough tension. What I'm doing, I'm putting the, I'm measuring how much the stroke of the thermostat. You get the spring, you measure it to see exactly where it sits inside. You see where is the uh, oil gallery when it's opening, how much front it has to block one and has to open the other one. All right. And I'm getting it, and I'm putting it here. I have shown you that before. I'm putting it on this. That I'm adjusting the height, as it is the housing, and then I see how much kilograms. But it doesn't matter that much. The most important is in how many degrees it's going to open. It's going to extract the piston here to open a clear path for the oil cooler. As an example, if need, let us say, to reach... Um, if you need to reach, uh, if, if to open, to open completely, to block this path, this one here, and open uh, the other path, 100%, need to reach 120 degrees, you can modify the spring, like what I'm doing all the time, to do that earlier. To don't wait to open the path, to, to close the bypass here and to open the other path at 120 degrees. To, to happen this sooner, to don't have to reach so high oil temperature. That's the principle with the thermostats. Okay, just a small adjustment. That's it. That's it. Over and out. This is amazing, by the way. The color of this. 
It looks beautiful. <laughs> okay, thank you. Since I haven't uploaded yet the video, let me show you what's my plan with the oil thermostat housing. That actually, that's my plan. 15 centimeters by 19 centimeters, 3 millimeter thickness, one aluminum plate. All right, that we're gonna have the same holes like this one. It's gonna be bolted down. All right, then I'm gonna have one window at this point. I'm gonna open at exactly the same point, one window to be able to weld it from this side. Why I'm gonna do that? First, to keep it for me as straight as possible, this bracket. Second, to transfer the heat everywhere, to don't have any headache. What's my problem here? If it is positive, that means if, let us say, I weld it and it's there, more high than the rest, I'm talking about that's what I'm talking about here. If it is, let us say, 100 of millimeter, 200 millimeters, or let us say even a 10 of millimeter, one second, higher, like this, all right, up, it's okay. It's okay, why? Because I can file it, I can machine it, I can remove material. Now, if I weld it and it end up there, you know, more down, then I'm gonna have a problem because when I'm go to when I'm gonna go to torque it down, it might crack, and I might have different problems. It's not gonna be that much off, obviously, but I'm gonna try my best to be as straight as possible. This is the fucking sealant what they put before. Why is somebody putting sealant? Yeah, why I'm wondering all these years. I get used to it. Never mind. Never mind. At the end of the day, I have to wash it again when I finish. And I hope that I'm gonna clean it again actually because before I weld it, I hope to be okay and don't come black smoke. <laughs> We're gonna see. It looks clean like the casting, right? Never mind. That's my plan. Let's see. Next video. Next video is supposed to be this ready and the cover is supposed to be ready if everything goes well. Yeah, now that's the end.